Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here. Hurricane Outlook and Discussion Time. Good to be back home in my office in Southeast North Carolina. It is Friday, 3rd day of September, headed into the Labor Day weekend. Hope you have something fun and exciting planned. If you're down along the Central Gulf Coast, Louisiana, yeah, it's not too fun for you. Uh, Hopefully the power will get restored and folks down there can start resuming their lives after what a terrible disaster there with Ida and then moving up into the Northeast. Um, I think it's definitely time for a new scale to emphasize the dangers to the public. We're going to talk about that at a later time. But the Saffir Simpson scale, these categories, which are for wind damage, that's it. says nothing about surge, nothing about rainfall. It's antiquated, and it's not a useful tool for the public. Something we can talk about later because, you know, I'm looking at the news reports out of the Northeast, and we're talking about over 56 people now confirmed dead from the flooding up there and that's more than were killed along the gulf coast and there's got to be a better way to communicate this threat of rainfall that can be a really really big problem that is catastrophic and so that would get a five right if you see a 160 mile per hour hurricane it gets called a category five because of the wind and anyway we got to address this we'll talk about it another time Uh, maybe have a panel discussion with some folks and get some input but for now let's see what's going on in the tropics luckily no threats to land right now from the Atlantic the Caribbean or the Gulf of Mexico as we get into the Labor Day weekend we do have this area what was it 91 L something like that sitting over Central America it's a big rainmaker well not too big but it is producing rain and of course that can be a problem causing mudslides and flash flooding and we don't want to ever de-emphasize that that's a hazard Um, So this is interesting. We'll have to watch and see. There could be the potential that some of this energy kind of makes its way up and then spawns something in this area sometime in the next few days. I'll show you that on the modeling in just a moment. Of course, we have Hurricane Larry, 80 knots or 90 miles per hour out in the open Atlantic, and it's going to probably stay out in the open Atlantic. We can see that on our interactive tracking map here. Uh, Big wave maker at some point uh, for the Lesser Antilles over here first and then eventually all along the coastline of a good chunk of North America and the Bahamas, the Caribbean islands and such and it might get close enough to Bermuda to warrant some concern at some point if this trends more to the west with time you know who knows it's it's early uh, in the whole process and so you can't completely ignore this if you're in Bermuda and I know you won't because you guys are smarter than that over there aren't you Howard? Howard knows Um, He's one of our supporters from Bermuda. In fact, we have a camera over there. Let's see if it'll pop up today. I tried to do this yesterday, and it backfired on me because my internet at the hotel was not cooperating. But today, it is. So here's Howard's cam from Bermuda. Looks kind of nice out there, yeah? All right. Hopefully it'll stay that way, and uh, we won't be watching for effects from Larry. Uh, And I'll show you why I don't think this is going to be a problem for the U.S. as uh, as well either except for as i mentioned those swells are going to come out and that'll produce some big waves along the coast and those can be problematic of course you hear me say it all the time got to remind you that yes swells and rip currents are impacts and they can hurt people and kill people so we need to be mindful of that going forward looking at the satellite animation this afternoon courtesy of tropical tidbits here's larry very well established outflow all around it Water temperatures are warm, but the upper ocean heat content is not significant. And so Larry is not taking advantage of that yet because it's not there. But as it moves along and gets into this zone right through here, water temperatures are going to be much warmer. But more importantly, the upper ocean heat content values will be higher, and Larry will eventually become probably a Category 4 and a huge ACE producer when it's all said and done, a big high-scoring hurricane out over the open Atlantic, not bothering anybody except shipping interests and, of course, those swells that we have to watch. Big old upper level low sitting here north of the islands, and that's not favorable. This is the front that came through that got kind of tangled up with Ida up in the northeast, helping to wring out that moisture even more. Kind of a nice day and a good deal of the southeast and east coast and mid-Atlantic today with drier, a drier air mass in place. But that will change. We'll see a return to Bermuda high pressure eventually, and we'll get the humidity back. I kind of like the warm, humid, convective season. 
Um, not a big fan of fall. I like winter because of the dynamics that you get there. So I do want my warm weather back, maybe get to the beach sometime. I've been gone for a couple of weeks, so i got to enjoy the a little bit of a downtime, especially with my kids and whatever. So, yeah, we'll give it the weekend for people to enjoy Labor Day, and then maybe things will warm up even more and get this cooler air mass out of here. It's like 61 degrees when I got home at 6 o'clock this morning from Louisiana. Um, elsewhere, we got to watch this thing coming off, another tropical wave. And it, too, will get into the Atlantic and will eventually have a chance to develop. We're just in that time frame now where any significant tropical wave coming off has a chance to develop, even if we're not in a favorable overall Madden-Julian oscillation. And I'll show you that at the end of today's update. Uh, what does that mean or whatever? I'll show you. Uh, we're just in a favorable time period. It's September, and the tropics are generally favorable across the board with a few pockets of unfavorable areas like that upper level low that I showed you. That's not favorable, but favorable. But overall, yes, we do have a quite uh, juicy pattern for these systems to develop in. And Larry certainly won't be the last hurricane that we have to watch or track or probably even deal with going forward. Here's a close-up. Not a lot of lightning near the eye or the core. If we see that develop later on as it encounters higher ocean heat content, then that'll be an indication to me and others that is starting to really intensify. When you get that lightning all around the core, and we saw that a lot with Ida before it started to rapidly intensify, that is a sign of very extreme, intense upward motion, creating a lot of ice crystals in the atmosphere, and that's what you need to get that sort of static buildup. you got to have those ice crystals up there, and the higher these cloud tops can push, they generate that lift, that tremendous lift in those ice crystals, and you get the differentiation of the charge, the buildup of charges there, and boom, you get a lot of lightning. So we can watch that in the GLM flash counter, as it's called, on the satellite. Pretty amazing that you can see the, the lightning flashes from space like that. What a cool way to track these storms. Anything vorticity-wise in the Gulf Caribbean or elsewhere? The answer is no. Nothing to speak of. This is the outline of the front that pushed through, the leftovers of Ida sitting up here, believe it or not, some heavier rain and squalls in that region. Uh, Ida will certainly be a retired name, we'll never have to deal with that name again. That is not my call, and by the way, that is something that the National Hurricane Center coordinates with the United Nations, part of the WMO, the World Meteorological Organization, and it's almost a shoe-in that Ida will be recommended to be retired from the list. Uh, a very deadly and, and very impactful hurricane for the United States and now the remnants of it there moving through parts of Atlantic Canada. All right, going forward, here is Larry in the vorticity field at the 850 millibar level from the GFS today. As you can see, high pressure right here, but it's not very prominent. You know, I've talked about that before. We've got a weakness over here, weakness over here with this trough. So this is not a very large chunk of air higher pressure to keep Larry down, so to speak, you know, to, to keep this suppressed uh, latitudinally, if that's a word, to keep it from gaining latitude, this would need to be sprawling out all over like this, pretty much, just a huge area of high pressure, and not have these edges of it kind of eroded away, and that's not the case, the edges are eroded away, and so Larry is going to take advantage of that and move around the periphery of that high not much building back over the West Atlantic. Here is Bermuda, just to keep your bearings. There's Bermuda right there. Larry comes up, and it looks like it'll be fairly well to the east of Bermuda. Close enough, certainly, to be like, mm, we got to watch this, right? Maybe some tropical storm conditions, maybe. We'll have to tune in to Howard's camera if that happens. But yes, this is still more than five days out, and any significant trends to the west, if this high pressure area is just a little bit thicker over here then Larry comes up like this that could be a problem but conversely this could also be a bit more to the east or thinner and Larry comes up and as well east of Bermuda so something to watch for sure and I know that you saw it let's zoom, zoom into the a different extent here uh, of the western Atlantic uh, close up to of where Larry is in relation to Bermuda there's Bermuda right there and here's Larry out at about uh, five days right there. So we'll watch and see. But you also see in about the five-day time frame, something tries to get going 
uh, from some energy in the Gulf. Maybe some of the leftovers from 91L that kind of hang out here. Let's just take this back a little bit and see if we can find the origins of this. So here's the energy with 91L right now, um, 12 hours out from the GFS, so this evening, whatever. It kind of goes and hangs out there, and eventually, you see that's the origins right there. It eventually tries to uh, close off and bundle the energy, bringing a weak system, a big rainmaker perhaps, just what you need, not. Uh, and then it kind of hangs out, and we'll see. You know, I'm sure eventually we're going to get an outlook from the National Hurricane Center regarding this, and we'll just watch and see what happens. I wouldn't worry about it too much yet. The Madden-Julian oscillation matters, and it's not favoring this part of the Western Atlantic right now, and as I'll show you in a moment, it's not forecast to do so anytime soon. And so this isn't in a very favorable overall environment like Ida was. So the, the chances of this becoming significant in terms of high wind and high surge doesn't look too likely. Not yet. We know how things change. The possibility for more heavy rain in areas where you don't need it, that's something we need to keep an eye on. Remember, we have to retrain how we look at this and don't go, oh, not a hurricane, I'm tuning out, bye, see you later. Okay, if you want to do that, do that at your own peril. You need to look at these updates as, okay, interesting, what are the impacts? What can I expect? And this right now looks like it could be a fairly significant rainmaker, depending on how, how it goes, how it evolves, where it, where it ends up, how large it is, how fast, how slow it moves. You know the drill, but we got to relearn that drill and think impacts instead of the big ticket and if it's not a hurricane, I don't care. Well, that's fine if you want to do that, but I advise against it. So the Madden-Julian Oscillation, currently uh, in basically the null phase, sitting in here. It's not really discernible. Uh, and then the European forecast for it here, I'll outline it in blue so it'll show up. Well, they already have blue, but you get the idea. It's supposed to amplify a little bit here, heading in. Uh, mainly into phases three and four. Most of the ensemble guidance shows that as well. What we need to look for is to see if it either propagates around the different hemispheres and comes back into phases one and two, or sometimes it just kind of meanders its way out and then just gets kind of stuck in phase two. Bottom line is that phase two area, phase one and two, but especially two, likes to favor in close development, very favorable conditions. It's just the way the pattern works with a very fairly regional pocket of very favorable conditions and Ida moved right into that and took full advantage of it when it did so. So we'll watch and see how that evolves, at least the weekend ahead. No major issues as people recover uh, from Ida all across the Gulf Coast there, especially Louisiana, and then up into the interior northeast. This is a very impactful event and one that we're going to remember and have to deal with uh, for a long time to come, a generational storm in an area that's used to them, you know, certainly the Gulf Coast, but the event up there in New York and New Jersey and Pennsylvania, uh, very different than what they're used to seeing up there. So hurricane season is not over. We have a long way to go, very active time, probably coming up in a couple of weeks when the MJO does come back around more than likely, so we got to be ready for it. All right, I'll do what I can for you, at least on my end, to update you on what I'm looking at. And that is it for me. Have a great weekend. Of course, I'll be doing videos throughout the weekend, keep you updated on what's happening. As always, thanks for watching. I'm Mark Suttoth, HurricaneTrack.com. I'll talk to you again tomorrow afternoon.